talking week nine of college football, and here are some of your notable matchups. Big Ten offering second-ranked Ohio State in Happy Valley against Penn State, the world's largest cocktail party in Jacksonville, offering top-ranked Georgia getting Florida. Oklahoma State and Kansas State, that's nine versus 22, and third-ranked Tennessee getting a test from Kentucky from the SEC. Yes, we are talking wagers to make right now from those power fives. And let's bring in Sports Lines' Chip Patterson. He of Cover 3 podcast fame. So, Chip, let's start with the SEC like we normally do. The conference offers the world's largest cocktail party with uh, Florida and Georgia. Kentucky is at third-ranked Tennessee. But your attention is on Ole Miss and Texas A&M. Now, why is that? Because I think we've got a Texas A&M team when you think it couldn't get worse. But don't worry, Aggies, it could definitely get worse <laughs> because you could be losing at home to fall to one in four in conference play, and I think that's exactly what happens. Now, here's the key here. Uh, Ole Miss is one of the country's best teams in terms of converting on third down. They are third nationally at right around 56%, and that is going to be so important because this is a game that is in a complete contrast of styles. Ole Miss has one of the fastest offenses in the country, running a play every 20.3 seconds. Texas A&M, on the other hand, ranks outside of the top 90 and near the bottom of the SEC. So what Texas A&M is going to want to do is try to keep the ball out of the hands of this Ole Miss offense. And so because Ole Miss is going to be able to convert on third down, that I think that Ole Miss is going to be able to string long drives together, wear down this Texas A&M defense, and one of the best rushing attacks in the entire country is going to be able to travel to old, to Texas A&M. I am also fading uh, the Texas A&M suspensions and everything around the suspensions. I am fading a Texas A&M team that just saw its punter enter the transfer portal here in late <laughs> October. I just think that we could be seeing uh, not the turnaround circle the wagons moment, but yet another chapter for a disaster season for the Aggies. Give me the lane train. I'll lay the short number. Yeah, and they're looking to bounce back from that loss to LSU. The Big Ten, meantime, featuring second-ranked Ohio State in Happy Valley against number 13 Penn State, while Michigan State is in Ann Arbor to battle the Wolverines. But your eyes are on Minnesota and Rutgers. What's the play there, Chip? The play is to go under because we have some certainty. Uh, Ohio State, Penn State, do we have any certainty with a big number like that? No. Michigan State, Michigan, do we have any certainty? What even are the Spartans this year? No. So you don't want to lock that in right now. Let's lock in what we know, and it's that Minnesota, with the way that it plays defense and with the way that it runs the ball, sets up well to just lead to a low-scoring game against Rutgers. And look, I want to give Rutgers defense some credit here because when you look at the entire Big Ten, when it comes to stopping the run, Rutgers is actually right up there with your Michigans, with your Iowas, with some of the best teams in the Big Ten at stopping the run. And so, look, Minnesota just got embarrassed by uh, Penn State yeah. last week. They are going to want to get back to their bread and butter. Their bread and butter is going to be running the football with Mo Ibrahim. It's going to be uh, playing great defense. And I think that Rutgers offensively is nothing that is intimidating. So even though it's a very low total, I'm going to be taking the under. All right, Chip, a week ago, Big 12 rank versus rank kickoff. You were looking at off for Texas and Oklahoma State. This week, it's those Cowboys again, this time at K-State. And again, you're not totally okay with Oklahoma State. Why is that? So I'm going to take Kansas State because of what I saw in terms of the depth that this team has at the quarterback position. You know, Adrian Martinez goes out. That's okay. Howard comes in. And yet they still have a fighting chance against one of the best teams in the country in TCU. Look, this is a really dicey number to play right now because officially Adrian Martinez is questionable. Howard, the backup, also questionable. Deuce Vaughn, the star running back, also questionable. But you know what I am questioning? I am questioning whether all three would really be out for a elimination game in the Big 12 title race for a game that's at home against a highly ranked opponent. I just think that within the fabric of Chris Kleiman's program, we are going to see some of these K-State stars that are listed officially as questionable with some doubt about their status. I think they're going to play. That's gut. That's not source. That's not reporting. But if they are ruled as active, 
this number might trickle out. All of a sudden it gets to two, it gets to three, might get over a field goal. So this is one where I say lock in K-State one and a half right now. And if I'm wrong, then we jump on a hedge position and see if we can get a sweet little middle. Yeah, sometimes you got to trust your gut, Chip. Among the ACC ranked teams in play, you have Syracuse matching up with Notre Dame, NC State getting a test from Virginia Tech, and Wake at Louisville. So tell me why you see money to be made from UNC and Pitt. Because Pitt running back Izzy Abanaconda is an absolute force. We already saw him uh, break Tony Dorsett's program record uh, with going over 300 yards rushing in a single game and six touchdowns. He is putting up so many multiple touchdown 100-yard games all season against basically everyone. He is the best thing that Pitt does. And North Carolina's defense has been among the bottom 10, 15 teams in the entire country, so much so that Drake May, the star quarterback, he has 24 touchdowns, and they've needed almost all of those touchdowns to be able to get out to this hot start. So I see this being a game where Pitt has no answers for Drake May, where North Carolina's defense has no answers for Pitt's run game behind Abinaconda. And I would reference earlier this season when we saw a not great Notre Dame team be able to run the ball right at North Carolina. I think Pitt will do the same. I think Drake May has answer after answer after answer. And while this is a very high number for a game with ACC Coastal Division title implications, I just don't see either defense being able to get a lot of stops. So I will be going over the total of 64 and a half. Now, Chip, the Saturday slate from the Pac-12 has U UCLA home to Stanford. Oregon and USC have roadies at Cal and Zona. But it's the Thursday kickoff that has your attention. 14th-ranked Utah having rallied past the Trojans now get Washington State. And what's the play here, Chip? Oh, the play here is to go over. I think that <laughs> what we saw with USC going against this Utah team is that Utah's defense, while statistically we had a lot of interceptions, Clark Phillips has been great, past defended numbers are good, that secondary can be had. You can move the ball a little bit, and that is going to be a good sign for Washington State and quarterback Cam Ward. I think that the Cougars in their upset bid are going to end up doing that by being able to score a little bit. And on the other side of the ball, I think that Washington State is not an overwhelmingly dominant unit, and Cam Rising is a fantastic quarterback, a playmaker who can get it done with his legs, who can get it done moving the ball through the air. Dalton Kincaid has done a great job of stepping up when they've had injuries at the tight end position. And so I just see this being a spot where you're going to Pullman on a Thursday night. I mean, weeknight road games are where Pac-12 ranked teams go to die. But I'm not ready to go all the way in on Washington State to pull the upset. So let's think about how Washington State makes this difficult on Utah. It's by scoring points. We'll see if Utah has enough answers. But either way, we should have enough touchdowns to go over this number. Yeah, they certainly had answers last week late against the Trojans. Let's go off the radar where you're focused on a kickoff that comes on CBS Sports Network. What's the game? What's the play and why? Oh, we are going to UConn, to Jim Mora Jr. and a fighting <laughs> Huskies team that is not the laughing stock of the FBS. This group is fighting. This group is competitive. I thought that you know we would be talking about UConn football as this being some massive rebuild that would take multiple years before we see any signs of them being competitive. That is not the case at all. And I think that playing at home with an ACC team in town, they are going to be fired up to try and pull this upset. If you want to go money line sprinkle, I don't hate that as a, again, a sprinkle. But everything that I've seen from UConn is that they are going to be able to be in this game against a Boston College team that is licking its wounds from just getting pummeled by some of the best teams in the ACC. And I think that makes them vulnerable to get beat. And the favorable number, seven and a hook. We ride with Jim Mora, and we take the Huskies. Yeah, I like it. I like Jim Mora Jr.'s team fighting, fighting to the finish. Our thanks to Sports Lines' Chip Patterson. And let's take a look at Chip's picks for week nine in college football. And you can see Chip's on three totals, lays the points a pair of times, and goes off the radar and taking the points. He likes the Rebs giving two against Texas A&M. Go under that total of 41 for Minnesota and Rutgers. K-State lay the point and a half against Oklahoma State. Go over a pair of times with UNC Pitt. And that in total is at 64 and a half. With Utah and Washington State, that total at 55. And take those seven and a half 
for UConn against BC. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.